Morning, it is Monday, November 10th. This is our weekly outlook. We're going to look at the satellite, rainfall over the next uh, week ahead, as well as some tropical signals moving into December. Uh, so today's satellite, we have this recent low and frontal system moving out to Tasman. You can see it down here to the southeast. And the resultant trough is now moving offshore into the Coral Sea. There's showers and storms clearing along the east coast of Queensland. Storms will build across the top end following this trough once it moves offshore and then we'll see a rebuilding phase of storms through the western interior of Western Australia from the Kimberley down through into West Australia's interior. This will be the precede for the next tropical uh, wave that moves from the northwest with a frontal system to the south moving across the greater east of the country. We'll see widespread storms building from as early as midweek and when I say widespread from Western Australia through the Northern Territory, South Australia, Queensland, parts of New South Wales and parts of Victoria and Tasmania. So every state and territory we expect to see some uh, elevated weather over the next week ahead. And this is due to this major cycle that's building into week four of November. We've seen a, a recent uptick in solar activity that's coincided with this wetter transition from late October to the present time. Several X flares are now ejected from the sun. Uh, the latest one firing off this morning is due to impact Earth from around the 12th so in the next 24 to 48 hours. And those will help uh, energize the atmosphere and add a lot more volatility to what's already occurring. This is the water vapour loop for the last 24 to 48 hours and this gives us a clear indication of uh, building moisture and the general patterns that we'll see moving across November. So since October we've seen these northwest flows building, moisture coming in from the Indian Ocean via the maturing negative IOD. Those, that moisture is moving in through the northwest, through the top end and through Queensland via these upper troughs that come up through the Great Australian Bight. So, this is the dominant steering mechanism we'll see over the next few weeks with these broad cloud bands and embedded thunderstorm periods. An interesting thing is this uh, constantly building uh, moisture anomaly around Christmas Island out towards Bali and south into the Indian Ocean. This is where we're likely to see the first tropical cyclone uh, genesis location of the 2025-2026 wet season. Whether this becomes a cyclone or not, um, I'm not really interested in, but what we're likely to see is a sheared system that shears moisture, sort of how this cloud's shearing away to the southeast, moving into the uh, Western Australian interior from around the southern Pilbara. This will be about um, week two, week three of December, around the 16th, we should see that impact in the coast. Uh, the system's likely to form from the 8th. And we have um, tropical cyclone ensemble models already plotting um, tropical lows forming in this general region, moving into the Pilbara and Kimberley as early as the next few days. So. Those models have been training now for a couple of weeks and they will continue to upgrade moving forward. And with this solar energy period continuing into late November, early December, its peak should, should spark the genesis of this, this tropical low signal moving into December. So just pay attention to moisture out here. We'll see a lot of cloud band activity streaming in through the northwest and those storms will filter right in through Western Australia, Northern Territory, South Australia, parts of New South Wales. So again, this, the northwest and western interior of New South Wales will likely miss out. The same with northwest Victoria at this stage. Um, this is the most favourable period of the spring season for the country. So if there is going to be rainfall for this area in the southeast interior, this is the most favourable period. So if we don't get rain in the next two weeks in this region, uh, it's going to be a long haul through summer and into the coming winter growing season. So just be prepared for that. Like I've been saying, make the most of what you get because it's probably going to be the last. So this is the accumulated precip for the ECMWF from today the 10th to the 19th of November. With these, use them as a guide. They don't, you're not gonna see this much rain everywhere. They're just showing a potential in the atmosphere. If we saw this much rain over the country at the same time, that would be quite significant and very unlikely. So just pay attention to how the models trend rather than looking at the picture and expecting that much rain. So the focus of the rain will be in the Northwest There'll be anywhere from 20 to 100 mils scattered right across the northwest due to thunderstorms. So this area shows the highest potential, but there's not going to be blanket 100 millimetres falls across the entire northwest. It's very, very unlikely. Uh, we don't generally even see that with a tropical low. Those will usually be confined to, th to thin bands where storms and convergent zones are localised. So what this tells us too is there's a strong northwest flow coming in from the Indian Ocean. And that's why the focus of heavy falls is in the northwest coast with that that convergence meets the Australian landmass. And then we know that following that progression, there's a, a northwest southeast flow moving through the northern interior through Queensland into northeast New South Wales. So there's a broad cloud band like we've seen over the last few weeks. Embedded with that, embedded within that 
anywhere from five to 50 mils is likely within storms. Severe storms, possibly higher, and those areas on the outskirts of these storm corridors will probably just see high base thunderstorms, gusty winds and no rain. So areas moving down through the Southern Channel country, most of northwest New South Wales, uh, the lower western of New South Wales, uh, the, the Mallee of Victoria, northeast pastoral interior, you'll see those high base storms moving through, similar to what you're seeing through September, October and early November. So unfortunately, um, it's still not looking very favourable for this area. And this, this indicates that drought progression too that we've been monitoring from Western Australia from 2023 into 2024, and then the drought that moved into South Australia 2024 into 2025. And the projection is that that then continues into the southeast interior well into the coming season next year into 2026. So we're looking at high fire dangers into um, the end of summer, into March for the southeast interior. Uh, but outside of that, showers and storms along the southwest coast, there'll be a few fronts that come through and drag these. There's a broad trough that builds through the western interior of Western Australia. And as these fronts move through, you can see the rain band where the front is. It'll pull those storms uh, through the central interior across the southern parts of South Australia and western southern Victoria, and then rebuild again along the ranges into New South Wales and then back up through the storm corridor of much of Queensland's interior, right up to the peninsula. So that's generally the, the outlook for rain for the week. Uh, if you're not in these storm corridors, uh, these have been trending quite well lately. Um, don't, don't hold your breath for rain. Focus with the northwest, western interior, Queensland interior, northeast New South Wales, and those southern coastal regions. This is the ECMWF 24 hour precip. So each uh, 24 hours it shows the rainfall within that period. Quite simple. So we had that recent front moving offshore, that's moving out towards uh, New Zealand by tonight. Uh, the, the rest of that trough that I was talking about moves offshore within the next 24 to 40 hours. So there'll be patchy storms along the east coast, mostly north of Newcastle, right up towards Cairns uh, along the ranges. Isolated severe potential is likely within those, especially south of Mackay, like rocky south to northeast New South Wales. There'll be the typical hail corridor there, so just be aware of that. Gusty winds, locally short but possibly heavy falls. Falls are only looking at 10 to 30 mils or so, and that includes right up to Cairns. And the focus is uh, the northwest, and there's that tongue of moisture moving down into the uh, West Australian interior. This will be the next little precede that creates this widespread rainfall period moving into mid month. So into Tuesday, we see there's a bit of a front crossing the, the southeast and Tasmania. So this will bring showers and patchy storms, mostly to southern and central Victoria into East Gippsland and the far south, uh, southeast of New South Wales. But generally light, five to 10, might be some isolated force 20, but more showery weather than thunderstorm related. Storms have contracted now north of Mackay up towards the peninsula. And we're seeing that rainfall through the West Australian interior start to thicken up. Uh, initially, it'll start as high base storms, but as the week progresses, it'll, it'll mature into more widespread rainfall on the ground with um, thunderstorm activity. Moving through to Wednesday, you'll see the east clears. There's a broad ridge building that'll push uh, coastal showers anywhere north of town, so usually around Ingham North to Cooktown to the peninsula. Nothing uh, outstanding there. The focus again is through the western interior. We see that tongue now pushes right down into the southern interior of Western Australia. There's a little front building to the south of Esperance with a small upper trough. So there'll be a bit of a, won't be a cutoff flow, but it'll be a vertically stacked sort of frontal system. And that'll help capture the upper level moisture through the West Australian interior. And that'll push that right through the interior. So we'll see a widespread rain building from anywhere from Thursday uh, for much of the nation. So we'll see that little front captures that moisture from the Northwest and, and the Timor Sea area, Indian Ocean. Was it right down through South Australia? Once we move into South Australia, we'll see that rainfall corridor become turn into those thunderstorm corridors that we've seen over the last two months where there'll be thin bands of storms anywhere from the northwest pass or into the Air Peninsula, along the Adelaide Hills, along those elevated regions through the, the mid-north and, and Flinders and those sorts of regions. Patchy 5 to 30, very lucky if you get under a storm, but there is some potential there. Uh, into Friday, same thing, that storm system moves further east. Uh, we see weather breaking down through South Australia quite patchy through the northern interior of Victoria with storms rebuilding through the greater northeast of New South Wales. These will be severe and the same through the Warrego Darling Downs moving to southeast Queensland, right up through the central Queensland interior. And we see that moisture is now coming through the Gulf, right out to the west through the, the southern Kimberley. So we'll see broad thunderstorm, broad cloud band right across most of the nation during this period. And this is a lead up to this 19th to 24th. 
So how this develops, you'll see each system over the last few weeks has got progressively larger, stronger, and more widespread. So this is why we're looking at this peak weather period into the last week of November, which should see that national rainfall period and be the peak wet period of spring, which we've been saying for about six months. We'd see a dry start to spring. It's slowly built up from the end of October with the peak wettest period through November. That's certainly what we're seeing. And that's courtesy of these long range weather periods that we forecast uh, months in advance. So into Saturday, it's much of the same, very widespread. These are thunderstorms, so you need to be under them. Um, some places might receive five mils, some places might receive 50 plus. So those areas through the interior of Queensland, particularly that corridor from uh, the Kimberleys through Western Queensland down to the Warrego, that's usually a very strong corridor this time of year. And that, that corridor will slowly progress eastwards and northwards through to the Gulf and Northeast Queensland as this system matures and moves offshore. So severe storms are likely anywhere. This is on Saturday from eastern Victoria, eastern New South Wales, southern inland Queensland, western Queensland, right through the Northern Territory interior, right up to the Kimberley and Top End. And within these storms, just very typical, locally heavy falls, uh, very active lightning. And as we move towards the east coast, we'll start to pick up some large hail. So just be aware of that. Moving forward into Sunday, again, we see that system starting to creep up to the north and east as the, um, the frontal system itself moves offshore. We see that traditional tail shift up through northeast New South Wales and curve right back to the, to the Kimberley. And we'll have storms right across the far northeast of the country. So a very active week ahead, building from about Wednesday, uh, moving into the 16th. And then we should see the next major system building. This is it here in the west. It should actually perform a little bit further south. Um, but this will be the next major system that builds and draws the next cloud band in from the northwest which with some luck fills in this void through the northeast part of uh, South Australia and parts of western New South Wales. Uh, whether we see decent falls or not will depend on the system, but uh, to this, at this rate, we're seeing these widespread storms be become a lot more active as we progress towards the end of the month, which is really, really good to see. So we'll follow this up through the week um, and through the week as well, I'll be working on the June 2026 long range forecast, which will be released Friday to our annual members. So you need to jump on the website, become an annual gold member to see forecasts beyond a month out. Cheers.